So I was wondering if there was one particular experiment or study uh, we could talk about and tell our uh, students about that you think provides the clearest evidence for a plant-based diet. Well, I'd like to come back to focus a little bit on protein, yeah. animal protein in particular. Yeah. And in the animal protein experiments and all the laboratory we did around that, uh, we fairly quickly were able to confirm that protein, the most prominent protein in cow's milk, mm -hmm. that casein, mm -hmm. uh, actually promotes cancer. Mm -hmm. It's really quite dramatic. Uh, we got to a point where we could actually turn on and turn off cancer growth by giving them, pro by giving them the casein or taking it away mm -hmm. uh, with, within certain limits. And uh, that was very dramatic because cancer was considered at that time and unfortunately still today as to be a, a disease that just progresses, mm -hmm. progresses through life as a result of a series of mutations. Mm -hmm. We were able to show in those days that's not true, that we can actually reverse cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was experimental. So that was a, an exciting observation. Um, I actually got it from an Indian paper in the 1960s where they had shown something like that, although they, did, they didn't believe the results. Right. So I, I could pick it up from there in an observation in the Philippines where I was working at the time. Yeah. And uh, so that, that, was, I, that led to a lot of other things beyond protein. Right. Uh, and it wasn't just the protein, by the way, and it was animal protein, not plant protein, mm -hmm. that turned on cancer. It was so prominent that um, we have a program in this country and elsewhere uh, to determine which chemicals cause cancer, which ones don't. We call them carcinogens. Mm -hmm. So based on the evidence that we had, it's very clear that casein is the most relevant, significant chemical carcinogen we consume. Right. Cow's milk protein. That's a very provocative statement to make. Yeah, yeah. Especially am I coming from the dairy farm and then right. doing my doctor dissertation on exactly the reverse. But there it is. Right. Nobody can dispute that. Uh, so that was prominent. That in turn led to questions about other nutrients mm -hmm. and the whole diet and other diseases. And so as we went through the years, that initial idea of protein causing cancer or animal protein causing cancer, it expanded like this. Yeah. And all the other stuff that came along kind of was consistent with that. And then, that so that was probably the most significant thing we did. Uh, however, uh, the, one of the most significant demonstrations of this effect is in, in humans was done by my friend, uh, Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, mm -hmm. at the Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, he, not knowing, we didn't know each other at the time, he was working with heart disease. And so he just took a group of people and fed them this kind of diet that I was talking about it was good. Yeah. Not quite as what I would have suggested. He changed it when we got to know each other. But in any case, he was taking a group of people with serious heart disease and basically giving them this kind of diet. Yeah. These are advanced heart disease cases. Mm -hmm. And he was able to show, and he published this in, in the best, very best journals, um, he could actually cure heart disease. It was amazing. He had 18 patients in the beginning, and uh, those 18 patients had had 49 coronary events in the previous eight years mm -hmm. uh, prior to his study. And then he went through 12 years yeah. where they published and uh, some of them had passed away because by the time they got in the study, they were quite old, some of them. Right. Uh, but not a single one uh, died of cancer. Then it went on to 26 years, which has been documented in the film Forks Over Knives. Right. Yeah. And in that case, his patients had gone for 26 years. Only five had died during the whole time, not one from heart disease. Mm -hmm. But it's only 18 patients. Just last July, he published the results of another 179 patients. And he was able to show when they go on this kind of diet, the risk of getting heart disease is less than 1% over the next four years it was, whereas the average with people that controls, the risk of, of dying or getting serious another attack is in the neighborhood of 25 to 30%. Yeah. So he's able to reduce it from 25 to 30 down to less than one. Right. That's so pretty that's pretty amazing. And he and I lecture a lot together all around the world, actually. Yeah. And so his demonstration of this for heart disease, very dramatic. Uh, my demonstration of sort of the scientific basis for this, the two really go together beautifully. Right. And so for our students, if they want to kind of look up both the experiment and studies you mentioned first in this later work, uh, there's a book, there's a chapter in the China study, right, about the 
casein studies that you were mentioning, right? Right. Chapter yeah. three, yeah. <laughs> to be specific. And then the, the l- latter work with the uh, Cleveland Clinic is uh, featured in Forks Over Knives. That's right. right. Well, both of our work was featured right, in yeah, yeah, yeah. Fork, Forks Over Knives, yeah. So to put those two together, I think it's the most prominent observation. I, I've got some more ideas I think are maybe more fundamental even now. Yeah. Because it does, it, what we're doing is we are obviously challenging dogma. Mm-hmm. And I would argue we even challenge the whole institution of science. Yeah. So I've got some ideas on, you know, how science has been conducted, is being conducted, yeah. neither of which is actually giving us the kind of information the public needs to know. Okay, yeah. 